Hi there. Oh, hello guys. Uh, okay, let's do a problem uh, about centroid. Actually, this problem is going to be about centroid, but it's going to be the first step for doing uh, the moment of inertia that comes after this one. So let's start with the centroid. And we have to calculate the centroid first of this uh, type of a structure, which is fairly common. You have seen that type of a structure in overpasses when they build the when they build the roads uh, here, for example, and then you have the other one on top of that, and, and that type of a structures is very similar to this one. So let's calculate the first the centroid, and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do the moment of inertia for the same shape. The first thing that you have to do when you have to calculate the centroid is set up a set of axes. Like I always say, you put them wherever you want to put them, but that whatever you want to put them, in my opinion, has to be uh, as close as possible at the axis and setting the whole figure in the first quadrant. After that, you decide how are you going to divide that. You can have as many figures as you want to. Try to select the minimum amount of figures. I can see perfectly that here, if you put a line here, that could be figure one, for example and then I can make a triangle here, another triangle here, I can say this is figure 2, this is figure 3, and this is figure 4. So we have four figures for this one. Uh, while you are learning how to do this, I recommend you to use a table, and the table for doing this, I say figure, that's the first one, and then area, which in this case is going to be in centimeters square, then x centimeters, y also in centimeters, and then a times x, which is the centimeters cube, because this is centimeter squared times centimeter, and a times y, which is centimeters cube also. Remember why we are doing this. We are doing this because our centroid with respect to x is going to be equal to the summation of x times a, xi ai from i equal 1 to n divided by the summation of the ai and similarly with respect to y we are going to have summation of i equal 1 to n of yi ai divided by the summation of ai which is the total area from i equal 1 to n also. So basically that's what we're going to calculate. We're going to calculate here this is going to be ai, xi, ii, ai, xi, ai, yi. And then we're going to do the summation here, summation here, summation here, and that will be our result. OK, figure. What I, what I like to do when I do this is not only put in figure 1, but I like to kind of represent where the figure 1 is located at, meaning here for example and in that way I have a reference of that figure with respect to my uh, set of axes. The center of figure 1 is here, figure 2 somewhere there and figure 4 somewhere there. So let's start with figure 1. The area 5 times this distance is 20, 40, 80, 60, 80, 110 so this distance is 110 centimeters. So the area is going to be 110 times 5, which is 550 centimeters squared. X, what is X? X is the distance from my e axis of reference to the center it measure in the X direction. This is 110. This is a rectangular shape. Uh, I know it's going to be at 55 centimeters in that part. So 55 centimeters, that's going to be X. And Y, what is Y? Y is the distance from my axis of reference to the centroid measuring Y. That means that this distance is going to be half of 5, so 2.5, but it's measured from here. That's why, you guys, I like to show it with respect to the axis, because I know the distance from here to here is 4, and then it's going to be half of that thickness. That means 40 plus 2.5, 42.5. And now the rest is just multiplication. You multiply this times this, and that is 30,250. And then you multiply this times that, which is 23,375. There you go. There you go. OK, now 
next figure I'm gonna use figure 2 same same I put my axis just as a reference for me and then I put my figure 2 wherever that figure 2 is located with respect to my axis I know this distance from here to here is 20 I like to put that 20 here and I know the base is 20 and I know the height is 40 this is just a reference for me once again because I don't want to mess up with this so the area 20 times 40 divided by 2 because it's a triangle remember divided by 2 800 divided by 2 400 x what is x the distance from my axis to the centroid I know the distance from here to here is going to be two-thirds of the base and the base is 20 so from here to here is two-thirds of 20 but I have to take it from with respect to my axis that's why it's 20 plus two-thirds of the base remember from the acute angle is two-thirds and this is 40 thirds and 40 thirds plus 20 is 33.3 periodic here in Y two-thirds from this angle acute angle and up two-thirds of 40 which is 80 divided by 3 26.6 periodic now with the multiplication 8 times X 30,000, 13,000, 333.3 and 400 times 26 is 10,666.6 periodic next figure next figure is figure 3 you can put here if you want 1, 2 3 now figure 3 what is a figure 3 this triangle and the triangle is somewhere there and the distance from here to there is 20 plus 20 40 plus 30 70 from here to there and my centroid is here which is one third now this is one third because this is the right angle so let's start with the area I just skipped there. The area is the same one because it's the same shape. 400. X now. 20, 40, 70 up to that point. Plus, from here to here is one third of the base, which is one third of 20. And that is 76.6 periodic. In Y, it's the same. Same triangle. Just flip from here to here two-thirds of the base 26.6 periodic multiplications 400 times 76 6666 6, 6. that's 30 666 6. 400 times 26 is the same 400 times 26 here so 10,666.6 figure 4 figure 4 Figure 4. That's the figure 4. Distance from here to here 40. And the base is 30. And the height is 40. What is the area? 30 times 40, which is 1200. What is x? The distance from here to there, which is 10, 20, I'm sorry, plus 20, that's 40, plus half of the base, 15, that's 55. Distance in Y, this is 40, half of 40, 20. 1200 times 55, 66,000. 1200 times 20, 24,000. Now look at the formulation again, formulas summation of xi ai i need summation of area and i need summation of xi ai and i need summation of ai yi when you add this up this is 2550 by adding this 
is 140,250 and then if I'm not mistaken you can check it is 68,708.3 applying the equations now you can get that x bar is going to be equal to this divided by that or x bar equals 55 centimeters and now when you reach this point you say why in the world did I do that yeah I know this is a demonstration this is an example that we're solving but in a real life example I don't have to calculate anything I know this is gonna be symmetric and if it's symmetric it's gonna be 55 period you don't have to do it. in my exams at least if you tell me that I think I respect you more because you are defending and you're using knowledge in order to do that. The other one is just calculations. Now y bar is going to be equal to this divided by the summation of the areas and y bar is going to be equal to 26.94 periodic centimeters. Now after doing this I like to locate the centroid within my figure just to have an idea of how good it looks like or how plausible it looks like x bar 55 does exactly what it's supposed to be 55 perfect and this is 26.4 well half of this is 20 but it's obvious that it has to be higher than 20 I don't know how much this is the calculation but it has to be higher because there's more area on the top part so the centroid is going to be located somewhere right there of the composite figure this is the first part this is just calculating the centroid let me copy here centroid of composite areas now the next one the next video uh, which is I'm not gonna do this again but we're gonna calculate this moment of inertia of the same shape of the same area see you in the next video guys have a good day